I'm joined now by Stephen Carlin, who is the manager of the National Hubs Network. Stephen, you're very welcome to Trouble Curry. Nice to have you. Brendan, good to be here. You too. And you're, you're enjoying the space as much as the rest of us, I'm oh, sure. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's space age. Isn't it? It really yeah, is. Like, and it's, as I said, it's lovely to see these more and more in rural areas. So, I mean, that's down to you a lot of the way, obviously. So what is the National Hubs Network programme and, and how is it connecting hubs across Ireland? Uh, I suppose the good place to start, Brendan, would be in this, where it all began. And it, it began with a an application through the Rural Regeneration Development Fund a number of years back, who was, which was led by my colleague Deirdre Frost. And that was for four hubs, um, one in Sligo, which we're in here now today, one in Donegal, one in Roscommon and one in Mayo. And I was the, the contact for the one in, in Mayo as a broadband officer at Mayo County Council at the time, the courthouse, which is where connectedhubs.ie, which we'll talk about later on, was, okay. was launched from last, last May. So that f- was a four hub application. And on the part of the application, we decided, well, let's look at branding it and marketing it and all this kind of thing and put that in as part of the application. So the Department of Rural and Community Development, they administer the Rural Regeneration Development Fund. So they looked at that application and thought, well, this would be a very interesting idea to look at scaling across the region. And the region they were talking about was the Atlantic Economic Corridor, which is... Okay. Donegal down to Kerry and the Western Development Commission has the remit for coordinating projects in that re- in that area and to, to understand what the AEC is is really it's a, co- it's a collaboration network so you work okay. with the local stakeholders on projects that might be able to scale across the network so that's where it began so myself and my colleague, colleague Pauline Leonard who was from Tubber Curry as it happens right. she began the work on the project uh, with, in close association with the department and uh, I joined in um, July time of 2019 so we were at this Brendan well before Covid hit which is important to know yeah. I know everyone's going to be saying that from now on we, we <laughs> pre-Covid and post-Covid we, yeah. have it in, we have it on paper yeah. so uh, ahead of the curve a little bit um, the department and the WCs and their thinking and the hub managers so uh, from that um, we produced a plan based on consultation with hub managers up and down the region. There was 114 hubs identified on that research. Uh, we held these consultation sessions in both par- in north and south of the, the region. And indeed, they were joined by hub managers from across the country. So there was a real appetite for, for, for the possibilities of what hubs could, um, could, pos- could do um, if, their potential, if they were helped to reach their potential. So based on that, we produced a, t- a strategic plan and we, we, um, we, uh, that was... Um, uh, delivered to the Minister for uh, Rural and Community Development, Heather Humphreys, mm-hmm. in February of 2020, just after she took office. Eventually, she got to see our plan at some stage and she looked at it and decided this is something that could be scaled nationally. Okay. So that's, and that became connectedhubs.ie. Okay. So, and again, for anyone watching, is it a case of anyone anywhere in Ireland? can just log in. I, I was doing a bit of yeah, research yeah. myself. You can pick the area, what date you yeah. need it. So if I'm not from Sligo, but I'm coming to Sligo working, for example, could I come mm-hmm. in and say, yeah, or if I'm from Tupper Curry and I need a bit of a space, I go in there and that's when you say it's connected. With, all of them are there on one site. Yeah, so at the moment, if you go onto the site, you're going to see that there's just over 200 uh, hubs on board it. Mm. So what we mean by that is we have a platform that offers a number of pieces of functionality. One of them is, uh, it's like an Airbnb service. That's the easiest way to describe okay, it. Okay, yeah. So you, your hub gets a profile on the platform. So very, very good imagery for your hub. Professional imagery is really, really important. We get so much feedback on that to say, we, you know, we use professional shots and we got so many more leads compared to the, you know, what we went out and shot ourselves on. Yeah. Seems simple, but that's your shop window online. So we offer that, uh, a, um, that profile and then we offer a fully integrated booking engine. And by that, I mean that the, inter- the booking engine is linked into the hub's bank account. So we don't take any... Okay, the okay. This is very much, Brendan, a value-add project. So how can we help the hubs, you know, add, how can we add value on top of what they're doing already? How can, that's yeah, really yeah. what the ethos behind this is. And then the crucial, I think, the, the, you know, the long-term um, goal of the, hub, of the hub network is the, the hub ecosystem itself. The making those connections, the attendance at various events, the sharing of of knowledge, etc., around various problems and issues, and uh, marketing opportunities that hubs can offer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the functionality. So when that, when you go looking to answer your question, Brendan, in mm. long winded way, no, 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 it's fine. At the moment, we're in the process of onboarding. This is the phrase we use at the yeah. moment. So we have two hundred on there. We have another two hundred that we over two hundred that we have researched done on. We have captured them versus an on, uh, via an online platform. So on, these, are, these are coming on stream with you. So. Yeah, they're already established. Oh, right. which is okay. key. You'd like, forget there's that many hubs. Like you wouldn't but, think it. Like. And, and sometimes people get confused. Are we going building two hundred more? Yeah, no, yeah, we're yeah. not. They're there already. Right. What okay. we're trying to do is this is a consolidation effort. Is to so there's another two hundred there that we have. Um, we have uh, done us carried out a survey, an online survey. We have gone through the survey. 
taken out the good, the bad, and all the rest of it, and, and we've got good, accurate information there. And they're now going to be progressed through the process of onboarding. So the 200 will change week by week and eventually become just over 400 hubs. Wow. We also, there's also a cohort of broadband connection points. Okay. So they will be featuring at some stage as well. Right. And I mean, you must be very impressed. This is probably one of the newer hubs in the country and you must be very impressed with what you're seeing. And it, it, it really is a fabulous space. And the work the local people have done here is amazing. Oh, it's really pleasing. And especially since I was, I was part of the, 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 uh, the Mayo aspect of this project yeah. to see the building uh, then, especially the space up here and to see where it's at now. Like this is, if you enter the middle, middle of any metropolitan city like and spotted this, you wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But to see this technology coming out now to the grassroots, right out to the edge. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. The, that's the magic behind this. It's nearly worth people taking a drive to come and see this place. Like, well, and do you know what I love? There's so much light and windows. It's actually just a lovely space. And then on top of that, the rooms are designated well. There's high-end tech everywhere. It's really well done. Like, No, it, you could walk in here now and like, you could feel really at home working in a yeah. space around here. I mean, the broadcast studio we're in here at the moment, I mean, you could run a, a radio show, a national radio show from here and broadcast it globally, I'm sure. Yeah, no, it's true. And I, that, when these radio shows do come around, it's now going, oh, there's a hub there. It's easy to get in. There's loads of parking. It's mm. easy to get in and get out. There's no big traffic jams, you know. So that's, I think it's great to see these things happening in more and more kind of rural areas. Like. Absolutely. I mean, the connectivity here is, is top class as well. Mm. And one thing we're, we've seen in a number of different hubs since uh, the lockdown happened is um, a demand for people who are doing job interviews. Can I nip into the hub in there? And then what they're doing is they're taking away the risk of something happening at home with the broadband might drop, somebody might come to the door, DPD might deliver something in the middle of your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes away all that. So there's lots of, lots of different, uh, uh, I suppose you call them products, the hubs now can be, uh, okay. will be able to offer in the future. And I mean, we spoke earlier about the future. Like, I mean, you've said, obviously, there's all these new hubs coming on board. Do you know, is, have you kind of other plans, bigger plans, better? You know, what's yeah. kind of the long term yeah, goal? I think the, the long term goal now is, um, first of all, um, we need to get those. But there's a body of work there behind the scenes. And my team, Paulie Leonard, Liam and David Murphy work on that. David is our GIS analyst. Liam is our community builder and Pauline is our hub executive. So they have three areas of work that they focus on. So getting the hubs on board onto the, onto the platform, yeah. um, making sure all their imagery and all that kind of stuff is right and that they're comfortable with what they're doing. And there is a step to be taken there because for some hubs, it might be their first time maybe getting a good engagement with digital marketing and the power. Yeah, yeah true. Because that's going to bring an expectation from the customer. And we need to support the hub network in, uh, in meeting that expectation because if they're booking something online, they're going to turn up the next day and they need to get into the hub and get there and get working straight away. Yeah. So it's, and it's not going to be a phone call. They can know? be like voluntary community groups helping get these things going and then it's the next level going where they need to be staffed and then no yeah. one's kind of going, oh, I don't know how to do here. It's like, yeah. yeah. So and, and that's that, where you come in, I suppose. And, that, and that's that a long-term aim too. And I, one of the great things about this network is that there's an interdepartmental group which is represented right across government, a number of key departments and agencies, and it's chaired by the Department of Rural Community Development. So they steer that that work. Okay. So high level um, policy changes, for example, are brought through from the grassroots and the hubs right through to that. So it's nearly like policy in real time. So the hub managers, have uh, they, we're in contact with them regularly through um, Liam's community meetup sessions. Big, air, big ticket items come out of those sessions. And where there's a commonality over a you know, number of these meetings, it becomes something that needs to be acted on maybe by, or needs to be actioned by policy or needs yeah. to actually at least be discussed. It meets its way all the way up to the top. And once you have it in policy, then you can do something about it, which is important for us. It doesn't sound very <laughs> sexy, but that's how it no, has to but happen. It, look, I, th I think it's very exciting to see that this is, is open doors to many people mm. and many small business, big business all over. So if people are... Sorry, you were going to say something there? Yeah, I, I, I didn't answer your question. No, actually. Still, no, still, not the long-term plan is... So next, uh, the next thing we need to do now is start um, focusing on how can we uh, get corporates' heads turned on what the hub network can do for them because... Uh, the battle for talent is well underway, as we yeah. all know out there, the big resignation or whatever it's called. And this offers another string to a, a, a HR policy, if you like, in terms of yeah. hiring. It's remote or it's the HQ. And now it's the hub. So three H's, yeah, hub, yeah. HQ. And uh, and what we need to do now is engage with corporates and business and say, listen, if you can you can base your people in here and here. Now, hubs are not, or businesses are not going to just start adopting hubs without having a good understanding of what they do and what they don't do. They need to know that their insurance um, yeah, all uh, the, the concerns are Red really tape as such and just make sure it's all done right. All very yeah. re red tape and all that, but it needs to be nailed down so that you know, we don't end up in a, a, somebody doesn't end up in a court case somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so for anyone that is watching, what's the website again? To It's uh, www.connectedhubs.ie. Well, yeah. Stephen, it, it sounds really exciting to see this is developing more and more. And as I love to see, it's spreading out further and further into rural communities. So well done to your team and department for, for getting helping along with this project. So thanks, thanks for chatting to us. Thank you. Cheers, Stephen.